Hi there, this is Virginia. Welcome back to the Tomarosa. If this is your first time here, just to catch you up, we are a small organic farm in Northeast Washington. We bought four of the cutest little Jersey calves last summer. We're going to breed them this year, and then in 2020, we are going to be our own small dairy. Since we are going to be producing and processing our own dairy products, we wanted to make sure we were producing the highest quality product that we could and any marketing advantage we would take. We are a certified organic. We are also doing batch pasteurization, which is the lowest level of um, pasteurization. We also had heard about A2 milk and decided we wanted to get our calves tested for A2. The first I had heard about the A2 milk was at the Moses Organic Conference in Wisconsin in February of 2015. At that time, uh, there was a presentation by Dr. Paul Detloff and it kind of blew my mind. I was thinking, this is crazy. How come this is something I had heard of before? Basically, it boils down to the amino acid protein chain. Uh, you can either have an A1 type or an A2 type. The A1 type, evidently there's a weak bond between some of the amino acids and they break apart and that piece can float around and create an inflammatory response in some people. If you have the A2 type, it's got stronger bonds and so it doesn't break apart. For milk, what that means is if there's somebody who is more sensitive, then maybe this could affect them. So this could help explain why you have some people who are not lactose intolerant, but they always seem to have trouble with like conventional uh, milk that they buy in the grocery store. But then they can drink goat milk, etc. Because evidently human milk is naturally A2 as is goat milk. For us, the way it was explained was this is something that does not make any difference to the cow. The cow does not care if it's A1 or A2. But if it makes a difference to the consumer, then you might as well breed towards A2 because then it's something that could increase uh, your sales off your farm. We already knew we were going to buy our cows from this dairy that we worked on in Astoria, Oregon, and they focus on New Zealand genetics. And New Zealand cows are naturally higher in the A2 genetics. So we felt pretty confident that our cows were going to be naturally A2, A2 cows. But we wanted to get tested. Uh, we didn't want to be one of those people who just said, oh yeah, my cow is a brown cow or a Guernsey or Ayrshire or whatever, so it's naturally A2. So we decided we would just, you know, use science. We had a vet call at the end of February, and while the vet was here, we had her uh, get some um, extra blood to put on these little sample cards, which was basically like blotting paper from this company in Nebraska called Neogen. And then we just let it dry and then we put it in an envelope and we sent it away and then a couple of weeks later we got the email and here is footage of us when we received the results of our a2 test cut to video the day has officially arrived we just got an email that has our a2 results and we've not opened it yet we have not we have no idea what we'll find i'm kind of nervous so I guess we'll just open the open it up and see what it says. A lot of words. I think that means I think they're all A two A two. I think they are all A two A two. So here, let me just zoom into this. So we tested our four cows and I think according to this report, they all t popped up as A2A2, which is great because I was afraid we were going to have to breed them to like an A2A2 bull and then eventually make our herd A2. Right. But now we're starting with an A2 Now herd. we're starting with an A2. So I'm very excited. So is the clock. And it's not that A1's the, the devil for us, it's just being a small producer, we're trying to do everything we can to increase our marketing. And for some people, it's very important for them to have A2 milk. This is something else that we can use in our marketing. So, yay! I feel like our girls all got into Harvard. Like, yeah. yay, they all got in! So as you can see, we were pretty excited that they were all A2. One, because we love each one of our cows, they have their own personality and 
we did want to breed to A2, but since we're going to have a closed herd, we'll just, all of them are A2, A2. We'll just select A2, A2 bulls, and we've already selected them for July. And when we do the artificial insemination or the AI, we will know that they will stay A2. I think what I would say is uh, there is some science behind this idea of A1, A2 on, in the sense of like studies and lab results. And then there's also, you know, stories from people who uh, can tell a difference between this type of milk. And the bottom line for me as a producer, as a dairy farmer is, you know, does it cost extra? Is it going to affect my cow? Is it going to affect the health of my cow? No, it doesn't. So there's no reason not to just go ahead and breed for it. And you could market it. And if it is helpful to other people, then that's great. And if there's no real difference for the majority of people, well, that's fine too. It, it doesn't really make any big difference um, from the producer side. I do have some people that I know who are very sensitive to milk. It'll be interesting to see once we're milking our cows if they are able to tolerate our milk when they couldn't tolerate the milk that they buy from the grocery store. That's about all I have for you today. I actually have to go outside and take care of the cows that we have, our lovely A2A2 girls. We will keep you up to date on everything that's going on in our farm. If you haven't already, please subscribe and follow us along. All right, bye for now. I'll see you later.